Back in 1962, the U.S. Army lifted its first CH-47 Chinook into the sky. It was built to carry troops, guns, and hope through the jungles of Vietnam. No one imagined that 63 years later, it would still be flying and evolving. But in October 2025, the Pentagon did something no one saw coming. It signed a $461 million deal, not for stealth jets or hypersonic drones, but for that same helicopter from 1962. While China builds sixth-generation fighters and Russia parades missiles, America upgraded a Vietnam-era helicopter instead. It sounds strange, until you see what it can do now. Every defense analyst who saw the Block II design said one thing. This changes everything. The Chinook was supposed to retire, not return. But the Block II version changed that completely. It can now carry more, fly farther, and stay longer in the air. Even China and Russia are paying attention, because something built six decades ago just became a modern weapon. The U.S. Army is upgrading 465 helicopters to the Block II model. Japan, Germany, and the U.K. are already buying in. Each upgrade adds 4,000 pounds of lift and extra range. One flight now does the job of two. So how did a 1962 design become a 2025 war machine? You're about to see why the CH-47 Block II just shocked the world. The CH-47 Chinook first flew in September 1962. John F. Kennedy was still president, and the Beatles were not even famous in America yet. And this same helicopter is still flying today. It carried troops, food, and weapons through the jungles of Vietnam, the deserts of Iraq, and the mountains of Afghanistan. War after war, it proved it could do anything. And after 63 years, the Pentagon said, we still need this helicopter. More than 1,200 Chinooks have been built. They have flown over 12 million hours around the world. 20 countries still use them. And in 2025, instead of retiring it, the US Army made it stronger than ever. This isn't about keeping old memories, it's about winning future wars. The new Block II upgrade gives it more power, more lift, and more range than before. It can carry heavier loads, fly farther, and stay in the air longer than any other helicopter in its class. Now the Chinook is not just an old aircraft, it's a modern weapon again. So what did the Pentagon really change? And how did a 1962 helicopter become the future of war transport? The old Block I Chinook could lift 50,000 pounds at most. That sounds like a lot. But in modern war, a lot isn't enough when you're flying through enemy fire. The new Block II version changed that completely. Now it lifts 54,000 pounds. That's 4,000 extra pounds of power in the air. That extra weight means more fuel, more ammo, more soldiers, or even a full artillery gun that used to need two trips. Those extra 4,000 pounds can mean 20 armed troops or enough fuel to fly twice as far. That's the kind of change that wins real wars. But here's what makes it even smarter. Boeing didn't just put in bigger engines. They rebuilt the whole structure, the body, the drivetrain, and even the frame balance. To carry stress, the old helicopter couldn't survive. The Block II isn't a small upgrade. It's a redesign built for modern missions. Every piece is stronger, lighter, and more efficient. Now the Chinook can lift more gear into dangerous zones without slowing down. But power alone doesn't win battles. So how far can it go now? And how does it stay in the fight longer than before? The old Chinook had one big problem. If it carried heavy cargo, it couldn't fly far. If it needed to fly far, it had to carry less. Every mission meant giving something up. The new Block II fuel system fixed that forever. It doesn't just store more fuel. It's a complete redesign built for longer missions with full loads. Now the helicopter can fly farther, even when it's fully packed with troops or gear. Think about this. A firebase 150 miles away used to take two trips or extra refueling stops. Now, the Block II can go direct, fully loaded, and still come back with fuel left. That means one mission instead of two. Half the risk, half the flight time, and double the efficiency. Commanders can now resupply bases, move artillery, and evacuate troops faster than ever. The upgrade changed how the Army plans battles. Fewer helicopters needed, less fuel burned, more lives saved. It's not just an upgrade, it's a new way of fighting. But now that the Chinook can lift more and fly farther, the question is, how does the crew manage all this new power in the air? The old Chinook cockpit looked like a wall of switches and gauges. Flying it felt like driving a 1960s truck. Everything had to be done by hand. Every reading, every adjustment, every warning light took time and focus. 
In modern war, that delay can get you killed. The new Block 2 cockpit changes everything. Now it looks more like a fighter jet than a cargo helicopter. It's packed with LCD screens, digital controls, and smart software that gives data in seconds, not minutes. Pilots don't need to flip through panels anymore. They just tap, see, and act. The new common avionics architecture system runs it all. It uses modular open architecture, so future tech like AI flight aids or autonomous controls can plug in easily. No rebuilds needed. It's made for the next 40 years of upgrades. During tests, pilots from the 101st Airborne said they could find and react to threats twice as fast under pressure. In real combat, that's the difference between getting hit and coming home. But advanced screens and fast computers are only as strong as the machine behind them. So what's actually keeping all this power, weight, and tech together under fire? You can't just add 4,000 pounds to a 60-year-old helicopter and expect it to stay together. The airframe would crack, the drivetrain would fail, and the whole thing would tear itself apart mid-air. That's what every engineer believed, until Boeing proved them wrong. Instead of starting over, they rebuilt the inside of the Chinook from the ground up. They reinforced the fuselage, strengthened the drivetrain, and redesigned the internal frame to handle new levels of stress. The maximum gross weight jumped from 50,000 to 54,000 pounds. But that's not the real story. The magic is how they did it. The new load-bearing structure spreads weight more evenly, changing how the whole helicopter handles under pressure. It doesn't just lift more, it flies smoother, lasts longer, and resists battle damage better than ever before. To outsiders, it still looks like the same old Chinook, but inside, it's a different machine, rebuilt, balanced, and smarter than anything from its generation. It's engineering magic hidden inside a familiar shape, but raw strength and smart design won't save you if you fly into missile range. So how does the Chinook Block II survive when the sky itself turns hostile? China and Russia now have missiles that can shoot down almost anything America sends into battle. Every resupply mission became a high-risk gamble. That was the Pentagon's nightmare. So the Block II Chinook was built for exactly this kind of war zone. Its extended range keeps it outside enemy missile range, while still reaching deep into combat areas. Its extra lift power means fewer trips, less exposure, and more safety for the crews. The new digital systems make it fly lower, faster, and smarter, even in zero visibility or heavy fire. It carries more armor, more countermeasures, and full payloads without losing speed. This helicopter doesn't run from contested airspace. It owns it. And that's what scares America's enemies most, because their anti-access strategy, designed to trap U.S. forces, just got broken by a machine first built in 1962. The Block II Chinook turned logistics into a weapon. Now missile zones are no longer off-limits, they're just part of the route. But if the regular army is impressed, what do the most elite soldiers on Earth think of it? The 161st Special Operations Aviation Regiment, known as the Night Stalkers, fly the MH-47G, a special operations version of the Chinook. These are the same pilots who carried out the mission to get Bin Laden. They fly at night, under fire, and in places most pilots wouldn't dare go. So when they saw the new Block II upgrades, they didn't just like them, they demanded them immediately because extended range means deeper strikes and heavier payloads mean safer extractions when things go wrong the mh-47g block 2 now shares the same architecture as the regular ch-47 f block 2 that means shared training shared parts and faster upgrades across both regular and special forces it's smart logistics that connects the entire army but here's what really shocked defense insiders the Army skipped normal testing timelines to push these into service faster. That only happens when commanders demand something urgently. Someone looked at Pacific War plans and realized these helicopters could decide who wins. Now the Night Stalkers have their ultimate ride. But the question is, why are Japan, Germany, and the UK now racing to buy it too? In February 2025, Japan ordered 17 Block II Chinooks for nearly $2 billion. Two years earlier, Germany signed an $8.5 billion deal for 60 aircraft. And now, the United Kingdom is next in line. This isn't just a shopping spree. It's a global bet on American logistics power. When allies fly the same aircraft, they share training, maintenance, and battlefield tactics. That means faster missions and smoother cooperation in joint operations. It's not about looks. It's about leverage. 
The Block 2 Chinook gives every partner nation the ability to lift more, fly farther, and fight together without delay. And Boeing's production line is already running full speed, building up to 36 aircraft a year just to meet demand. But here's the detail most people miss. Japan's order wasn't only about technology, it was a strategic signal. Proof that Tokyo trusts America's supply chain and long-term military backbone more than China's promises. This is geopolitics disguised as procurement. Each new buyer strengthens the US-led network that keeps the skies open. But one question still hangs in the air. Why upgrade an old machine instead of building a new one from scratch? For years, the US Army spent billions on the future vertical lift program, a plan to build brand new aircraft with tilt rotors, next-gen engines, and futuristic designs. It was supposed to replace every helicopter in the fleet. But in 2024, the Army cancelled the entire project. It was too expensive, too complex, and too far from being ready for real war. So instead of waiting decades for a prototype, they looked at their 465 Chinooks and asked a simple question. What if we just made these perfect? That one question changed everything. A Block 2. Chinook upgrade costs $25 to $30 million per aircraft. A brand new future helicopter? Over $100 million. With a 20-year wait. The math was simple. The Chinook was already proven in combat, already trusted, and already built for upgrades. The Block 2 showed something the defense industry hates to admit. Sometimes evolution beats revolution. Perfecting what works is faster, cheaper, and often smarter than chasing what doesn't exist yet. The Army learned that the future doesn't always need new designs, just better thinking. But now the big question is, how long can this 1960s helicopter keep flying before it finally retires? The U.S. Army plans to fly the CH-47 Block II until 2060. But engineers quietly admit something more shocking. With proper care, these helicopters could keep flying until 2070 or beyond. That means a 108-year lifespan for a design first tested in 1962. No other weapon system in history has lasted that long and stayed battle-relevant. And it's not luck keeping it alive. It's smart engineering. The modular design lets the Army plug in new sensors, AI co-pilots, and autonomous flight systems as they're developed. This helicopter isn't frozen in the past. It's been future-proofed by design, and the evolution isn't stopping here. Block 3 is already on the drawing board, with stronger engines, helmet-mounted displays, and predictive AI maintenance that spots problems before they happen. That means the same airframe could fight in wars our grandchildren haven't even imagined yet. For a helicopter born during the Cold War, that's beyond survival. That's dominance. The world just learned a hard truth. The future of war doesn't always come wrapped in stealth and chrome. Sometimes it looks like a flying school bus that refuses to die. The CH-47 Block II isn't just an upgrade. It's proof that perfecting old technology can beat inventing new technology, and it just rewrote the rules of modern war. While other nations chased futuristic aircraft, the United States quietly turned a 1962 helicopter into the most capable logistics weapon on Earth. And no one noticed until it was too late. Because dominance isn't about chasing shiny prototypes. It's about making what you already have unstoppable. And that's exactly what happened here. The Pentagon spent $461 million on a design most thought belonged in a museum. Analysts laughed until they saw the data, until they saw the 4,000-pound lift gain, the extended range, and the digital brain built into a frame older than most pilots. Then the laughter stopped. Because the Chinook Block II didn't just survive modernization, it won it. That half-billion-dollar contract wasn't nostalgia. It was strategy. The oldest helicopter in America's fleet just became its most important one, and the entire world took notice. And here's what scares America's enemies the most. If the U.S. can do this with a Vietnam-era helicopter, imagine what they're doing with everything else you haven't seen yet. The CH-47 Chinook was supposed to retire decades ago. Instead, it just came back stronger. Reborn as the future of battlefield logistics. And it's not going anywhere anytime soon. You just saw one of the smartest military choices in modern history. The U.S. didn't chase new dreams. It perfected what already worked proving that evolution beats revolution every time. Sometimes the smartest move isn't building new machines. It's making old ones unbeatable. If this story surprised you, hit like right now.
And if you want more real defense breakdowns the media won't show, subscribe and turn on notifications. Now tell us in the comments, is upgrading old tech the future of warfare or should armies keep chasing the next big thing?